Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new to watching my videos, then welcome. But Shabbat Shalom, ladies, we are here to see another one. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Mashiach, Yahweh, Shai. It was a short week. They had the worldly holiday on Monday, but you know, sometimes those short weeks feel like the longest weeks. So it's a lot that happened. And uh, and I'm just so happy and so thankful we are here to see another Sabbath. Hallelujah. All praise be to the Most High, Yahweh, Basham, Mashiach, Yahweh, because in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And this is the day that Yah has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. So today is going to be a great video because there's a whole lot going on in the world. Normally, I don't try to bring in about worldly stuff. You know, but you always got to be circumspect, keep your head on a swivel, you know, constantly see what's going on in this world. And that's what we're going to talk about. So the title of today's lesson is, are you spiritually weak or are you spiritually strong? So before we get into it, turn, uh, get your Bibles out, 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. Go ahead and pull that out. And we are going to go to Titus 2, 3 through 5. And we make a point on this channel to always bring out this set of scriptures because that's what the Most High says. <laughs> Titus 2 women, you know, we need to do this thing right. We ain't out here breaking down videos about what I'm about to talk about and breaking it all down, doing all that. That's not our job. But we definitely should exhort each other all the time. And uh, so let's read it. So Titus 2, 3 through 5 reads as follows. The age women likewise, that they being behaviors becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yah be not blasphemed. So again, the title of this video is, Are You Spiritually Weak or Spiritually Strong? So we all see what's going on right now. Right, all the fighting that's going on in our homeland, Israel, Jerusalem, okay? And the fighting is going on between these two countries. So seeing all of that made me think, you know, about these last days. It really did. It kind of had me thinking kind of like everybody else, to be honest. You see a lot of gentlemen right now bringing a lot of these videos out because it is needed. We need to be talking about this stuff. So you're not going to see me do the same thing. I'm not going to go through an entire breakdown of what's going on because, again, that's not my place. If you want to watch those videos, go to the gentleman that watch it. They are very edifying. I'll be watching them come Shabbat. So I'll be doing the same thing. So I highly recommend doing that because there is a place for what they're bringing out and how many scriptures they're bringing out because it is prophecy. But I did um, want to do something for you ladies because obviously that's, you know, Yah has called me to teach you ladies. So we're going to keep it in the scriptures, go to Matthew 24, and we're going to read a little bit about the end times and how it does correlate to what we are seeing right now. So this is the end days. You know, we have to make sure that we are being vigilant. You know, we are being diligent. We are being consistent, all of it. You know, we are making sure that we are leaning on the most high. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this lesson because we need him. It is the end days. We need him. We cannot do anything without him. And we will not be able to survive what's coming on this earth without him. So let's read Matthew 24. Because if you've never read Matthew 24, a lot of you have followed me on this channel and you know this book backwards and forwards. So you know the, the story in Matthew 24. But there's a lot of you ladies that have not read the Bible all the way through. So Matthew 24 is Yahawashai speaking to his disciples and they ask him about the end times. How will we know? How will we know when it's going to be these end times that have been prophesied by the prophets but that you're talking about? How are we going to know? So I want to read a, a couple of this. Read the entire chapter of Matthew 24. It breaks it down, just like 2nd Edris, um uh, 14 and 15 breaks it down about what's going on in the end days and a lot of other books like Joel and um, Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Isaiah. There's a lot of prophetic books about the end days, but this one right here, I want to read because this is very specific about what we are seeing right now. So let's go to Matthew 24 and we're going to start at verse four. And it says, and Yahweh answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Yahawashai, and shall deceive many. That's a lot here. Starting to get a little bit hot here. Um, 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Yahawashai, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. So you see that? So that's what's going on right now. We are hearing of wars and we are seeing actual war. Because even though um, we didn't break out into World War III when uh, Russia started attacking Ukraine and it becoming like a big thing, that's like rumors of wars because we started hearing about it. And, and all those years before, it's not just right now. It's, it's you know, Yahweh is not saying, oh, right, in 2023 and 2020 is going to be what I'm talking about. No, rumors of wars have been going on for years. So you still have to understand that we are in these end days when he's saying wars and rumors of wars. And we're going to continue. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So take note of that. Be ye not troubled because all these things must come to pass. Hallelujah. We are not going to go back into our homeland if we still got Gentiles over there. So things have to happen. The Most High has to do what he's doing. It may You may be seeing all the stuff I'm seeing. It look crazy, but that's the Most High's vengeance. Hallelujah. So we praise the Most High. There's scriptures that are in Psalm that says you need to praise the Most High when you see the vengeance come upon your enemy. So we ain't crying over here. Okay. So verse number seven, for nation shall rise against nation. You see that? That's also another point. Nation shall rise against nation. So right now we're seeing it going on between these two countries. And I have to be selective here because we don't, we need this video taken down, but y'all know what's going on. And kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall ye deliver, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall end come. Hallelujah. So I wanted to read that because... And like I said, read the rest of 24. But I wanted to read that because it is so pertinent to what is going on right now. It's so prophetic to what exactly we are seeing of what's going on right now. So these are the end times that I'm talking about. We are living in them. We need to be built up in our spirit. We have to be spiritually strong. Okay, so it all of this made me want to pose a question to you guys. You know, if this does escalate, into more prophecy like what we just read and it turns into Jacob's trouble like we know is going to come on the earth are you spiritually prepared are you spiritually strong or are you spiritually weak let's go to the book of Nahum let's go to one and seven so the book of Nahum is in the middle of the bible and it comes after like uh Jonah and Micah um What's right before that? Obadiah, Amos, um, Hosea's be or Joel's before that. So get into that area. So go into like kind of like the middle of the Bible, and then you'll get to Nahum because Nahum is not that big either. So we're going to go to Nahum one and seven, and it reads as follows: The Most High is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and He knoweth them that trust in Him. So this is the point of this video. Like I said, we are in need of the Most High. We need to seek him when he can be found. So when we are thinking about how all of this is going to, how we're going to have to deal with this specifically, I'll say that, it's going to be through our faith. It's going to be through all of the um fasting and praying that you're doing at this time. It's going to be leaning on the most high, seeking the most high, asking him for wisdom, asking him for patience and, and faith and um, uh, uh, just being spiritually strong and uh, just faith, just so much faith. I can say that one over and over to be honest with you. It's just you have to ask for so much faith because there's no more playing around. I mean, I need to be, we have to be serious about this lesson right here. This is time to be serious because we are to be using this time to get built up. This is the grace period. This is the time that we all have to, all of us have been in this truth, for all of us that have been in this truth, have to continue to stay in the spirit and continue to build up our 
um, our spirit and our faith to be strong because we don't know what's going to happen. We can't just be like, oh, I have enough faith and I know I'm going to, I know I'm this. Peter thought the same thing. Peter thought the same thing. And if you know about Peter, he rejected the most high during the time of his crucifixion three times, just like he said, and he went on and was forgiven and became one of his disciples and have his, and has his own book. However, you don't know how you're going to deal with that that time. And the flesh is weak. I'm going to get into all that. You know what I mean? We have to understand that the faith and the strength that we have and are going to have is not of our own. It's ultimately come from the most high. So let's go to Jeremiah 9, 23 through 24. So let's go to Jeremiah 9. Twenty-three through twenty-four reads as follows: Thus saith the Most High, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom; neither let the mighty man glory in his might; let not the rich man glory in his riches; let but let him that glorifieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Most High, which exercise kindness, loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, save the Most High. And that first portion is what I want us to really kind of understand. Thus saith the Most High, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. So we can't think that, oh, I'm going to do whatever I you know, have in my mind. I'm going to be a strong, I'm going to endure until the end. You have to pray that the Most High allows you to endure until the end. You got to pray for this faith. He has to grant you that kind of faith that you have that the, that the mother and seven sons had in 2 Maccabees 7. You have to pray for that kind of faith. That is granted to you. So it's not just about us thinking that we can do all on our own. You know, We have to give all praises and all honor to the Most High. That's how you're going to be able to be spiritually strong because the flesh is weak. Let's bring that out. The flesh is weak. Let's go to Mark 14. And this is precept heavy, okay? That's what because we, we're dealing with the scriptures here. Not about what I say, not about what you think. It's about dealing with the scriptures. So let's go to Mark 14 and 38. And it reads as follows. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. So that's not just there just for one person. That's there because the Most High knows that he made us that way, that we are weak. There's no way that he's going to get the glory if we don't, see how much we need him if we don't see the power that he does the miracles and the workings that he does it's, it's like looking it's like thinking about what happened with Gideon if you look in the book of Judges and how he was going up against you know this crazy huge army I forget who the um uh, I think of Midianites um who he was going up against and their army was so many it said the camels looked like it was the sands of the sea do you know how much how big that is and he got all his Israelite you know brethren together and most I was like no that's too many no 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 back that up that's too many no that's too many too just for the most high to be like okay now that little bit that's going to go against this army I need it to be small so I can receive the glory hallelujah so if we are to be spiritually strong and deal with what's coming on this earth and and, and actually prevail it's all praises to the most high yeah how about Mashiach yeah so we have to ask him for this and, and, and become spiritually strong for him. Because if you're not spiritually strong before Jacob's trouble, you know, then you will fall into temptation and the fear of them, which can kill the body. So I want to bring out a couple of uh, precepts. Let's go to the book of Psalm and let's go to 56, three through four. Psalm 56 Three through four reads as follows. What time I am afraid, I what time I am afraid I will trust in thee. And Yah, I will praise his word. And Yah, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. That's beautiful right there. That's the kind of faith we have to have. We don't fear what the flesh can do. Okay. We know that the Most High controls everything. That is the power. That's the spiritually strong. That's how you can look death in the face. That's how you can look and will look death in the face and be able to say, it's for the Most High. I will die for his name. I have picked up my cross. I will, you know, thus say of the Most High and, and die, you know, with that strength that all of us have to have as his children. Not cowering in the end, but you can't do it on your own. It's getting built up prior to that. All right, so let's also stay in the book of Psalm. Go to Psalm 118 and 6. 
Psalm 118 and 6 says, The Most High is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? You see that? What I mean, this, we got to get into these scriptures. That's beautiful. Highlight that. Both those. Psalm 56, 3 and 4 and Psalm 118 and 6. The Most High is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? And I think the next one is what I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. Go to Matthew 10 and 28. I want to say it, but I'm like, I think I brought this out. So I'm not going to say it. Matthew 10 and yes, Matthew 10 and 28 reads as follows. This is, this is what you ultimately have to feel like. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him, all praises the Most High. Rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That is how we get spiritually strong. You fear the right one. You don't fear an Edomite or an Ishmaelite or a Hamite or whoever it is that's going to put you up for persecution. That's not who you fear. Not the person that can just kill the body. You need to fear the Most High. But if you turn on the Most High at the end and you don't endure until the end, then you're going to be committing yourself to the lake of fire. Fear him that can that, that can kill the body and the soul. Remember that. Highlight that. Matthew 10 and 28. And fear not them which kill the body. Who are they? They don't control anything. The most high can make a bullet jam when somebody tries to shoot you. The most high can allow anything to happen in that split second because he controls life and death. They don't control anything. Don't let anybody scare you and think that they can control it. That's the faith you got to have. They don't control anything. You have to make sure that you are so strong in your faith that you get exactly what I'm talking about. That you know without a shadow of a doubt because you've already sought the most high. You have that relationship with him. And if you don't get it, get it. Let it be unwavering. Like it says in James, you don't want to be wavering in this thing. The Most High doesn't like that. He wants you to know what I'm saying is right and feel the exact same way or don't. There is there is no in-between with him. There is no ride in the fence. There is no gray area. You know he can do it and you know his word doesn't come back void or it or you don't believe it. Period. That's having that real strong faith. And I want all of you ladies that listen to the sound of my voice to get there. And if you're already there, hallelujah, all praises be to the Most High. Yeah, how about Shema Mark? Hamashiach, yeah, how shy? Man, I'm getting all excited. I'm sweating even more. I'm getting all excited. So <laughs> as we rely on Yah's strength instead of our own, that's how we gain new heights. That's how we gain deeper levels of our spirituality. Because man can in no way save himself. None. That most high makes sure of it because he wants all the glory. Only Yah can save. So let's go to Proverbs and let's go to 29 and 25. Proverbs 29. And 25 reads as follows. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the most high shall be safe. See, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the most high shall be safe. Hallelujah. And let's also go to, um, stay right here, go to 30 and go to five. So it should be very close. 30 and five, Proverbs 30 and five reads as follows. Every word of the most high is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Come on, man. He is a shield unto them that put a trust in him. <laughs> like a bullet can't jam because somebody trying to shoot you. Okay, come on now. Y'all better know what this thing is and know he can do all things. So to be spiritually strong, you have to get it from the most high. You need the faith that I'm talking about. So let's go to the book of Ephesians in two and we're going to read eight through nine. I told you it's going to be precept heavy up in here. That's what we are doing. Precept heavy. So Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 reads as follows. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of Yah, not of works, least any man should boast. I love that. That just sums up everything that I'm saying. You have to get it from the Most High. He's not going to allow you to be able to do everything on your own volition. All these things that I'm saying, and, and you can just do them just because you're strong enough. That's how Edomites feel. I've done all this. I've built all this, and I've done all this on my own. Why? What God do I need? I can look around, and I have everything. I don't need God. No, we're his children. We don't feel that way. We know that by for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of Yah, right? Not of works, least any man should boast. 
I love that right there. That is just absolutely beautiful because we are weak and helpless without Yah's blessings. We can't do anything. So Yah alone is able to save and is able to destroy. But it is Yahawashai who empowers us to do whatever is necessary to accomplish Yah's will. There is no other source that gives a man that kind of strength to overcome the world with its trials and with its temptations. We are, we are, we are to align ourselves with the strength of Yah through our total submission to him through his son, right? So I'm gonna say that again. There is no other source that gives man the strength to overcome the world with his trials and with his temptations unless we align ourselves with the strength of Yah through our total submission of him through his son, Hamashiach. Then and only then are we able to withstand the walls of the devil. Yah did not give us the spirit of fear. So let's go to 2 Timothy 1 and 9. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, Salakia, 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 reads as follows. For Yah hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we must put on the full armor of Yah. That's, you know, one of my favorite. That's Ephesians 6. And I think it's uh, starting at 10, if I'm not mistaken. You know, we have to put on the full armor of Yah. Yes, Ephesians 6, 10 through 19. Put on the full armor of Yah. So, we have to make sure in these end days that we are using every day to draw closer to him, fasting and praying so that we can be spiritually strong and to stay spiritually strong. Because it's not, like I said, it's not just about you coming into the truth and you not having it. It's also for all of you ladies that's been in this truth for a long time, still continue to fast and pray so you can stay spiritually strong. We're not here yet. We ain't at the end yet. That's why in Matthew 9, sorry, Matthew 24, we read that he says all these are going to happen, but the end is not yet. So we haven't even begun. To, we're still comfortable. We haven't begun to deal with anything. So we have to continue to get built up in the spirit. That's why it's so important to fast and pray on a routine basis. So your body is used to it. If you're out in the who knows where, because we don't even know where the Wilson is going to be. Let Just anywhere that's not your house, anywhere that doesn't have all the food and the comfort. And you have to go without eating and you got to go three days and you don't have any food. You're supposed to have already, you prepared your body for that. You're not dying after 24 hours because you've already been in the habit of fasting and praying. It builds up your spirit and it is also physically going to build you up. So it's so important to do that and to get into the habit of that. So your body is used to it and you can go three days without food and water because you've done it when you were comfortable. You know what I mean? So we don't know what we might be up against. So that's why we have to make sure they're prepared. So we can't, you know, um, have anything but faith. We have to know that all of it is going to require a lot of faith. So let's go to Revelation. And I wanted to save this for the end. And let's go to 2 and 10. Revelation 2 and 10. Let's get built up in this faith. All right. Revelation 2 and 10 reads as follows. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and he shall have tribulation 10 days, but thou faithful until death, and I will give thee a crown of life. I'm going to read that again because that is so important. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Fear none of it. Again, read Second Maccabees 7. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful until death and I will give thee a crown of life. Hallelujah. Be, be, be strong. Be ready for whatever for the most high. Okay. And always remember Yahweh and his crucifixion. So if you've never read the gospels, you know, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then make sure you get into it. Because it gets, you know, uh, more detailed and more detailed by the time they get to John. And you will understand the crucifixion and, and, and Yahweh Shai's whole entire walk. It's in there for a reason. It's not just in there because Esau wanted to make it into movies and make money off of it. It's in there for you to understand that what he endured is is what you can endure. You know what I mean? It's not just for you to read and be like, oh my gosh. It's for you to get built up and strong and be like, that's right. Okay? That's why it's in there. So 
Let's learn from his example. Let's look toward the kingdom and know that to get there, all these things shall come to pass. They must come to pass, all of these things for us to get to that kingdom. So let's read Sirach 11, 25 through 27. This right here, when I uh, was doing my research, I was like, I got to bring this up. So Ecclesiasticus 11 and 25 through 27 reads as follows. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. For it is an easy thing unto the Most High in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways. The affliction of an hour maketh the man forget pleasure, and in his end his deeds shall be discovered. I need y'all to really understand that. That is beautiful right there. That is absolutely beautiful. So many around us that are going to be in this world are going to grow weary and they're going to faint. But not you. Not you. You will not grow weary. You will not faint. That's why you're in this truth. That's why you have ears to hear. And that's why you are already pushing forward. I know you are to get the kingdom and to have that faith and to get built up in that faith. I know all you ladies are. So those who hope in the most high will be spiritually strong. All of you out there. So let's finish up with Isaiah 40 and 31. And let's read the classic. Isaiah 40 and book flip to the book of Isaiah. Hallelujah. This video right here. You know what I mean? I love it. So 40 and 31 reads as follows. But they that wait upon the most high shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, Bashem, Mashiach, Yahweh, Shai, for bringing out this video. I'm so incredibly thankful that I can sit in front of here, you know, speak to you ladies and bring out his word. It is so encouraging. It made me just feel so full today. I hope all you guys love this video. You feel encouraged. You feel mighty through the word. Please read these scriptures, you know, go over them. Let them help you get built up. Continue to stay built up in the spirit. And just know that all this stuff that you see, know that Most High did not give us a spirit of fear. All of these things must come to pass. All of it, all the uncomfortableness that's coming must come to pass for us to be put back in our land. Hallelujah. And that is a glorious, glorious day. That's going to be a glorious day. I'm going to leave y'all with that emotion because I need y'all to really feel me. I love you guys. Thank you guys for another time that you're watching. I hope you guys have a beautiful, restful wonderful sabbath um and that you just get closer to the most high each and every day shabbat shalom